everyone. I'm going to talk uh, a little bit uh, about uh, the, the need for us, to your point, and to, to, to what we were just talking about, uh, of being intersectional and of the fight ahead. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Sarah McBride. I'm the National Press Secretary at the Human Rights Campaign, the nation's largest LGBTQ civil rights organization. And I'm also the author of the forthcoming book, Tomorrow Will Be Different, Love, Loss, and the Fight for Trans Equality, which comes out this March. Over the last year, we have witnessed relentless attacks from the Trump-Pence administration against the LGBTQ community. From the rescinding of life-saving guidance promoting the protection of transgender students, to the granting of a sweeping license to discriminate against LGBTQ people and other Americans for government workers and federal contractors, to the attempts by the president and vice president, as Peppermint talked about, to reinstate a ban on transgender people serving openly in the military. But we also know that the challenges facing our community did not begin on January 20th, 2017. Before that date, and to this day, a majority of states and the federal government still lack clear and explicit protections from discrimination for LGBTQ people. And through it all, the LGBTQ community is as diverse as the fabric of this nation. We are workers and women. We are black, Latinx, Asian, and indigenous. We are Muslims and immigrants, and we are people with disabilities. Audre Lorde reminds us that there is no such thing as a single issue cause because no one lives single issue lives. And that's why, as others have said, we must fight back to protect dreamers, including LGBTQ dreamers from deportation. It's why we've resisted as a community in lockstep with so many others, all attempts by this administration to rip health care away from millions of Americans, including those living with HIV and transgender people. It's why, as a movement launched in response to police violence at the Stonewall Inn, we must always declare that black lives matter. For those in our community living at the intersection of multiple marginalized identities, we must never forget that the toxic mix of transphobia, homophobia, misogyny, racism, and other prejudices can have often fatal consequences. As Peppermint mentioned, 2017 was the deadliest year on record for the transgender community. 28 transgender people, most of whom were transgender women of color, were murdered. Each and every one of them were lives filled with hopes and dreams. Peppermint mentioned that oftentimes that violence came at the hands of a loved one. Other times it has come at the hands of a stranger. Hate-based violence is a national emergency. And while bigotry, discrimination, and hate violence is sadly not new, there is no doubt that it has been inflamed and emboldened by politicians all too eager to appeal to the darkest undercurrents of American society. This is a moment of choosing for our country and for all of us as a community. And we have been called to a righteous cause. It's not just our nation's children who are watching. It's also posterity. The countless generations for whom this moment, this time right now is a chapter in their history books of tomorrow. And while every chapter may be influenced by politicians and presidents, we know that in the end, they are written by each and every one of us, by the decisions each one of us make every single day to either be silent in the face of prejudice or persecution, or to speak out, to fight back, and to bend that arc of the moral universe just a little bit more towards justice. As we saw in North Carolina in 2016, as we saw this year in Alabama with the election of Doug Jones, and as we saw, as others have talked about, in the Commonwealth of Virginia when Danica Rome ousted the state legislature's self-designated chief homophobe, when diverse voices are heard, when all of us in the LGBTQ community speak out, when we mobilize and organize as a community, we can still defeat the politics of fear and division, of discrimination and misinformation. With anti-equality politicians in leadership positions in the White House, in Congress, and in far too many states, we certainly have our work cut out for us. But this year, as voters head to the polls in crucial states across the country, we have the opportunity not just to defeat the politics of hate, but to elect candidates who will work with us to move equality forward at the local, state, and federal level. And that's why this past summer, the Human Rights Campaign launched HRC Rising, our largest expansion and investment in grassroots organizing in our organization's nearly 40-year history. We've hired more staff. We're working to enhance infrastructure in critical states across the country, and we're expanding our grassroots army of more than 3 million members and supporters so that this year, 
we can elect more pro-equality candidates up and down the ballot. In states like Wisconsin and Ohio, we can fight to re-elect senators like Tammy Baldwin and Sherrod Brown. In Arizona, we have a chance to elect a second openly LGBTQ person to the U.S. Senate in Kirsten Cinema. There are races just like this around the nation for the U.S. Senate and House, but also for city councils and state legislatures, for mayors and governors. You can work with us to help achieve that change by visiting hrc.org or texting equal to 30644, 30644. Over the last year, we have proven that no election, no presidency can silence our voices. From coast to coast and on countless main streets in between, we have resisted with pride in ourselves and with power in our voices. And that is the story of the last year. It's a story of our movement from Stonewall to the steps of the Supreme Court and beyond. That no matter the challenges we face, no matter how troubling the times, even in the darkest moments, we have transformed impossibility into possibility into reality. We have seen that change is possible that nothing will stop the momentum of our movement, and we have proven time and time again that our voices matter.